Well, hello everyone, and welcome to Pragmac. Today I'd like to talk about Razer, and when I think of them, I always think of them as a gaming company. I think about their PC gaming cases, I think about all their accessories, and of course, I think about their gaming laptops. Sometimes that can just become a bit overwhelming. It's hard to decipher what you need and what you want specifically. And when it comes to the Razer laptop lineup, it's a little bit easy to get lost among the choices. And this year, Razer has gone and made it a little bit more complicated because they brought back the 14 inch laptop size, bringing one more choice into the mix. But a little bit more on that in a second. First, let's just talk about the smallest of the Razer laptops. Their super thin and super light Razer Blade Stealth is the smallest display size and the thinnest for their gaming lineup. It has a 13.3 inch display and it's meant to be the laptop of choice for those who want the most compact of solutions. Currently, though it does sit a little bit out of place and a little bit outdated because it only has a GeForce GTX 1650 Ti. That's just not the most powerful card these days. And now going up a little bit in size to the Razer Blade 14. Naturally it has a 14 inch display which is a display size that Razer had actually just stopped producing a few years ago. Now it's back. It's actually the newest of the blades. It's just been released and interestingly enough it's the only of the Razer laptops to be powered by AMD. Next in size we have the Blade 15 which sits in the middle of the lineup with two variations. There is the Blade 15 base model and the top end model, the best model, the Blade 15 advanced. At the top of the list, at least for size, there is the Razer Blade 17 with its whopping 17 inch display size. It is arguably the most powerful of the Razer laptops and it's definitely in the desktop replacement segment. As you see, there are laptops from the 13, 14, 15, and and 17 inch display sizes. I think at the bottom end and the high end, so with the Razer Blade Stealth, I think it's an easy decision whether you want it or not. If you want the best in graphics, you're not going to want it. But if you want the thinnest and you want Intel, it's going to be an easy choice for you to go that route. And in the same vein, when you look at the Razer Blade 17, if you want the biggest laptop, if you need a 17 inch display, if you want that desktop replacement experience or even the ability to travel around with a very large laptop, it's simple. You're going to go with the Blade 17. But I think because the prices somewhat overlap and they're very close, I think where you want to spend the bulk of the time with your comparison shopping is going to be between the Blade 14 and the Blade 15. Having a good comparative breakdown of these two laptops and seeing what we can find out. As you see, making choices is tough and it's best to have all the most relevant information before having to come to a decision. Comparing the Razer Blade 14 and Razer Blade 15 is very natural. They both currently have RTX 30 series graphics. Let's just begin by pointing out the big differences, which I'm going to try and minimize. That's the screen size. As the Blade 15 touts the larger 1.6 inch display size, makes it simple. If you're looking for the biggest display, the further we compare these two and the closer the pricing gets, it's going to be a tough sell not to get the Blade 15. If display size is your main concern, I think the deeper we get into things, the Blade 15 is truly going to show its value. For a quick overlay, you can see how the these two displays compare from a size perspective, what the real estate difference is going to be relative from one to the other. Moving on from display size to physical size, there is an interesting breakdown between these three laptops. As I stated before, there's actually two versions of the Blade 15, the base model and the advanced model. And when we compare the Blade 14 against these two Blade 15s, we find something very interesting in that the Blade 15 advanced model is actually the thinnest of all all three laptops. However, it's not the lightest. The lightest of all three, that goes to the Blade 14. It is the lightest and it's actually pretty thin. Then there is the Blade 15 base model. Simple. It's the bulkiest and it's the heaviest. That's why it's the base model. Let's stop and let's remember that the thickness and weight of a laptop is not always the most important. If it was, if portability is your focus, then the deeper and deeper we get into this comparison, the Blade 14 and the power within it is gonna really show its value because it has a really good power to portability ratio. 
At the same time, the Blade 15 Advanced model is very thin and also packs a lot of power with the larger display size. So things are just not as simple as they seem. So let's take a deeper look at the internals. As I mentioned before, the Blade 14 is the only Razer Blade laptop to be powered by AMD. It is powered by a Ryzen 9 5900HX. Having a look at the Razer Blade 15, both the base model and the advanced model come equipped with an Intel Core i7. They both have the same processor, an 11800H, making at least the Blade 15 base and advanced models easy to compare, at least against each other, as they have the same chipset. When we look at the AMD chipset versus the Intel chipset, they both have eight physical cores and 16 threads, putting them on pretty equal footing. Just as a reference, I did do some research on how these chipsets benchmarked. From what I saw, and in my opinion, they're pretty similar. For certain software or perhaps certain games, there might be one that stands out above the other. Generally speaking, I think we can proceed in the comparison by saying that they are similar enough, neither is going to justify getting one blade over the other. Unless, of course, you really do have a preference for one chip manufacturer over another. I know there is a personal preference for AMD over Intel and vice versa. So I just wanted to get that out of the way. Looking at some other internals and choices, in this case, the memory choices. There is a clear divergence between our Blade 15s and Blade 14, meaning that for one of these models, the memory choices are going to be for the life of the product. And that lack of choice, it's on the Razer Blade 14. 16 gigabytes. That is the only choice and the only way that this year's Blade 14 is going to be shipped because the RAM is fully soldered onto the board. And as you can tell, I obviously have mixed feelings about this. I am sure they had a technical reason to do it or a cost reason to do it. Maybe to maximize the thinness of the device. I'm not sure. And I'm not going to dwell too long on it. However, I think it is a very important note and it's just something that consumers should be aware of. The Blade 14 will simply not allow for any RAM expansion and you're not even able to purchase it configured with additional RAM. There is no 32 gigabyte model and thus no matter what pairing of the GPU you give it, regardless if it's an RTX 3060 all the way to an RTX 3080, you can only pair it with 16 gigabytes of RAM. Again, this might not be a concern for you, your games or your workflow, but for many it might be specifically at the higher price points. On the other hand, with the Blade 15, both the base and advanced models, they come with with 16 gigabytes of memory. Even when they do come with 16 gigabytes of memory, they do offer the ability to upgrade the RAM later on, meaning it's user accessible. There are two slots available and you can fill these slots up to a total of 64 gigabytes down the line. That leaves a lot of room for expandability. And so I'll leave you to dwell on that and we'll move on to the next point, which is kind of similar. And this is storage enhancement. When you purchase a laptop, the internal storage might be really important to you or it may not be. You may be purchasing one that has more storage than you think you're ever going to use. On the other hand, as computers age and time goes by, files just get bigger and maybe our requirements follow suit, meaning we just need more storage. Having a look at the internal storage capabilities of the Blade 14 versus the Blade 15s, there is that similar issue of expandability that we saw with the RAM. Now, this time there, there isn't anything to be concerned about. There's no soldered drives for the Blade 14. It does have an M.2 NVMe slot and it's user accessible. No worries there. However, there is only one slot. And what that means is if you want to expand your storage, you have to swap out the existing storage. So you're spending money while losing storage at the same time, making it a little bit difficult when you have to swap out a good drive just to expand on your storage. The Blade 15s, however, they do offer a better alternative and that is they have two M.2 slots. One is being used for the base storage and the other one is being left open, which is perfect for for expandability down the road. What that does is it makes it really easy. It doesn't force anyone to have to remove a drive. Rather, they're able to go purchase and add in a drive if they need to at the time they need to. It's just great to have a spare slot there waiting in case you need it. Pretty simple. All right, moving on to ports. I wanted to highlight some of the differences between these three. When it comes to ports, all of the blades do fairly well. They're all outfitted with HDMI, USB-C, and USB-A ports. I am gonna highlight those the Blade 15 base model here, as it does end up having the standout feature of being the only razor blade that has built-in gigabyte ethernet, which is great if you want the best connection to the internet and you want to get those latency times all the way down. The Blade 15 advanced
advanced model, although it lacks that gigabit ethernet, it does have the most ports. A highlight of that is that it does have two Thunderbolt 4 ports, with the Blade 15 base model only having a single Thunderbolt port. So big difference there. Of course, there is no Thunderbolt at all on the Blade 14 due to the fact that it is an AMD chipset and that Thunderbolt is an Intel technology. For Thunderbolt, the Blade 14 loses out and the Blade 15 Advanced model is the best. Moving on to the more practical perspective of this video where we actually look at some prices and specs next to each other, having broken down some of the main discrepancies, keeping them fresh in your mind between the Blade 14 and the Blade 15, we can now have a look at how they stack up, specifically from a value perspective and what pros and cons might come along with that decision. A lot of them are clear because we've highlighted them already and they just maybe stand out a little bit when you put pricing along with it. Beginning with the cheapest of the models, the cheapest possible configurations from both the Blade 15 and the Blade 14, let's see how things compare and, and how things turn out. At the entry level price, of course, we are comparing the Blade 14 to the Blade 15 based model and they both come configured with Nvidia GeForce RTX 3060 graphics. They both come with 16 gigabytes of RAM. The big divergence of course it's that Intel versus AMD processor and the fact that the Blade 14 actually comes with full terabyte of SSD storage versus the 512 gigabytes on the Blade 15 base model. And just one divergence that I forgot to mention is the Blade 15 base edition has a bit of that older design. That's why it's thicker and bulkier but additionally it has an older thermal solution, whereas the Blade 14 has that new thermal design. So I did need to mention that and just point out, so moving back to our comparison, moving back to the Blade 14 and the Blade 15 base edition, pricing wise, Razer has priced these two identically. They are both $17.99. Putting them side by side at $17.99, both with a 3060, it really does become a battle of Intel versus AMD, and if you have a preference, if you require any sort of expandability down the road, whether that be RAM or storage, one makes it easier and possible than the other. And of course, portability. If portability is your main concern, at $17.99, that Blade 14 looks awful tempting. And we do have to remember that the Blade 15 base edition is lacking those modern thermals, the modern vapor cooling system, and also, for example, per key RGB keyboard. And those are things to remember, including that the Blade 14 has more standard storage. If you're not going to want to upgrade down the road. It's better to just have more up front at one terabyte. Now I wanted to move on and compare the Blade 14 3060 to the Blade 15 Advanced model with a 3060, but it really doesn't make any sense. It's really hard to compare these two, seeing how they have such different displays and the pricing really didn't work. So once I matched up the display configurations and brought the card level to a 3070, there was a better comparison between the Blade 14 and the Blade 15 base model. You can see once we've matched these up, there's now only a hundred dollar difference. As you move on to the more advanced RTX GPUs and you get into the higher price points, I believe this is where the RAM question really begins to weigh on the decision. At the same time, if you want a 3070 and you want it in a small package and RAM expandability is not your concern, Blade 14 does offer a really good package. Moving on to the highest end GPU, the RTX 3080. This is where I think the Blade 14 simply becomes a tough recommendation. If anything, the sweet spot is gonna be at that 3070, but let's have a look anyway. When we have a look at these side by side, the Blade 14 is still priced $300 below the Blade 15 advanced model. However, it becomes a staggering comparison when you notice that the Blade 15 advance has 32 gigabytes of RAM, and there's still headroom to double down into 64 gigs down the road. Although Although you can still save $300 compared to the advanced model, the Blade 14 at $2799, it does look a little bit expensive. So price wise, it definitely does stay competitive with the larger counterpart. At the same time, the portability flash begins to wear off at such a high price point with no ability to ever breathe life into that device later on. And now that we've reviewed the pricing, some of the differences and some of the similarities between these three laptops, let's look at some possible reasons to get each of these
these models. Starting with the Blade 14, it's very thin and it's the most portable and it can pack the latest and greatest in 30 series Nvidia graphics. It has modern cooling, it has some great port choices. At the low end, it is surprisingly competitive, priced the same as the Blade 15 base edition. Buyers should think long and hard about their RAM requirements and if they are okay with that 16 gigabytes of RAM, it is possibly the best choice and the best price if you don't plan on doing any sort of upgrades down the road. Reasons to get the Blade 15 base edition, well, it's gonna be your love of Intel. I'm just joking. I think it's the long-term desire to upgrade or totally replace the onboard RAM. Maybe you want that spare slot for some more storage expansion. It's gonna be thicker, it's gonna be bigger, and it's not necessarily gonna be more powerful than the Blade 14, but you are gonna get a larger display and you're not gonna have to spend any more money. You're gonna have that possibility to upgrade things later on. You do have to take the older design, but hey, you get gigabyte ethernet, so that's a win. And when it comes to getting the Razer Blade 15 advanced model, I think that's because you're going into the higher end models, you're gonna get the higher end graphics cards. In the end, Razer has offered a lot of choice for customers and in many ways they've made things simple and complicated all at the same time. So just have a further look at that lineup and see what's best for you. Thank you everyone and thank you for listening to my thoughts. I'd love to hear yours. Which model do you think is the best value and what configuration would you choose? Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. If you've enjoyed this video, please consider giving it a like. It is most beneficial for me and most beneficial for the channel. As always, I wanna thank you for joining me on this discussion. And I wanna say, if you've enjoyed it, maybe you'll enjoy the next one. So consider subscribing to the channel. As always, thank you from Pragmat.